rocks. But unlike the gypsum, when malachite is heated up, it does something special. It releases a metal. Copper. You know, in its day, this copper axe head would have been the pinnacle of technology. For a start, it's weighty. I mean, if you hit something or someone with this, it would leave a dent. For another thing, it's hard enough to take an edge, and if it gets blunt, you just sharpen it up. You can still see evidence of the ancient smelting pits at Timna. But the copper workers left behind a more striking memorial to their work. A network of hundreds of tunnels, all carved by hand. This was the first large-scale mining anywhere on the planet. Those early copper miners would have squeezed through these narrow shafts on all fours, smashing their way through the rock and hauling the piles of copper laced ore back to the surface. You know, the copper revolution changed our relationship with the planet in a really profound way. For the first time, we were transforming what the Earth offered us and in the process, creating entirely new resources. And copper was just the start of things to come. About 5,000 years ago, tin was added to copper to form a new, more durable metal alloy, bronze. By 3,000 years ago, Refinements to the smelting process meant iron could be smelted out of rock. Metal tools became the foundation for human civilization. So it's clear we owe a huge debt to those first copper miners at Timna. But we also owe a debt to the deep earth. The key to Timna's role in early history is its location. The earth's crust is divided into huge pieces called plates. Where they meet are cracks known as fault lines. Timna is next to the Dead Sea Fault, which separates Africa from Arabia. But this fault also connects Timna to the deep, hot interior of the Earth. It's this hot interior that is ultimately the source of all the metals that have so radically changed our history. Fault lines allow them to rise to the surface. just as they did at the Crystal Cave in Mexico. But fault lines began affecting human history even before the discovery of metals. In fact, we've been strangely drawn to these boundary zones ever since the dawn of civilization. And you can see why in the barren wilderness of the Lut Desert in Iran. The landscape is covered in hundreds of holes arranged in rows. These holes in the desert can help explain our ancient attraction to fault lines. 
but that involves me going down one. Something the locals seem a little bemused by. Hey. So this is it? Khanat? It's tiny. I don't think I'm very fed. How deep is it? Apparently it's 50 metres. That's over 150 feet. OK, I guess we, we do it, huh? So we go down? And if this deep, dark hole wasn't scary enough, the method for going down is unconventional at best. So we take this, like a pulley, and this goes over the top, I guess, does it? So do I go on this? You can't buy those, I bet you. I've never gone on a rope with a metal tripod pulled by a tractor before. Well, I think we should just do this before I change my mind. OK, what could possibly go wrong now? Blow my neck, though, I really is deep. I'm going to lower it down into the bowels of the earth here. I wasn't sure if I was claustrophobic, but now I realise I'm... I think I am. Oh, it's so far up. Look at that. Ah, oh, dear. I don't want to do this too many times. For over 2,000 years, local people have been digging shafts like this, by hand. And I get the sense I'm about to find out why. <sighs> All right, here we go. <laughs> I misjudged it. Look at this. This is the answer. The essential ingredient of every civilization on Earth. Old, fresh drinking water. This is what made this remote corner of the Lut Desert one of the few places in the region that could sustain towns and cities. And I'll tell you, after a trip like that, this is so nice to have. Right, I'm off to explore a bit. I want to find where the water's coming from. This tunnel leading off the shaft is called a canat. It's one of many in this region, hacked out of solid rock to capture groundwater that's stored deep below the desert. I'm feeling as if I'm in a, an underground rain show. I've traveled about a a couple hundred metres now. It seems to be getting smaller and smaller. It's getting narrow here. Well, this is it. This is the, the source of all this water. It's just pouring in from here. Underground water exists beneath most deserts, but it's usually so far down there's no practical way of getting at it. The difference is here, there's a fault line. The fault is full of thick clay, produced by the grinding of the surrounding rocks as they rub along the fault line. This forms a clay dam, which water can't penetrate. Water flowing down from the mountains pulls against the dam, creating an underground reservoir through which a canat is dug to channel the water. 
Gravity does the rest. So originally, the water would have been banked up against this fault line, unable to penetrate through the clay-rich barrier. But what the locals did was to cut a canat across the fault line, breaching the barrier and releasing the water. It was a simple but brilliant piece of engineering. Okay.